Hi, I'm Angie and yeah, today we're not making one filling for our chocolate bonbons, but two. And um, those fillings are inspired by Oreshki. And Oreshki are um, cookies, you see a picture somewhere here, maybe you've had them before. Um, and the shell is kind of like a, a shortbread cookie, but a little bit softer, like not snappy, but like a softer shortbread cookie. Um, and then they have a dolce di leche, which is a caramel sauce inside. Only one confusing thing. You can see that the shells are like walnut shaped. Um, but I looked up a few recipes online and there are just no walnuts in there. So I'm not sure if all the recipes I looked up um, are more modern versions and maybe traditionally um, there were walnuts in there. But um, yeah, I don't know in the cookies where the walnuts are. We will use walnuts in our chocolate bonbon filling. Um, but yeah, if you know, let me know. So this is explaining the cookie itself. But maybe also, um, what is dolce di leche? And am I pronouncing this right? Dolce di leche means um, candy of milk or sweet milk, and it's Spanish. Um, you often see it in Latin America, but I've also seen it in France. And it's basically a caramel sauce. I'm pretty sure that our bonbons will not taste exactly like Oreshki. Uh, simply because I'm not adding cookies um, and I'm adding chocolate. So the flavor will be like a lot different. Um, but yeah, it's certainly an inspiration for today's video. As already mentioned, I will make uh, the dolce di leche and a walnut ganache. If you have the time, you can also add a layer um, of shortbread cookie into your chocolate bonbons. I think this would make it really perfect. Um, I just don't have the time for it today, but I think if you make like those three layers, this will be good. And another quick heads up, um, I will make the dolce di leche and uh, the walnut ganache uh, with coconut milk. So my version will be dairy free. But I will also show you how you can make dolce di leche uh, with uh, milk with dairy. And of course for the ganache you just use cream, I'll use the coconut cream and we're good to go. Alright, I just quickly want to show you um, how you can make a dolce di leche with um, sweetened condensed milk, which is a classic. So let's pretend this is um, sweetened condensed milk. So you put it in a pot of water and let it cook. Once it's cooking completely, um, you reduce the heat so it's simmering and then you simmer it for about two to three hours. The longer you cook it, like closer to three hours, the more brown and more caramelized your end result will be. Just make sure while it simmers that your can is always covered in water, so um, add more water during the process. And that's it. Uh, let's move forward to make a dairy-free dolce de leche. Um, so I have here 150 grams of sugar and half a tablespoon of uh, glucose syrup. You won't necessarily um, need a glucose syrup, but it just makes it easier to caramelize the sugar. This is how it looks like after about five minutes or so. Is this happening to your spatulas always as well? Like especially the cheap ones that they crack in the middle? Not fun. Now it starts to smell really, really good. And I'm reducing the heat. Adding 42 grams of butter. I have a vegan butter here, but of course you can always use dairy. And just melt it and stir it. And then I have 200 milliliters of coconut cream and 200 milliliters of coconut milk in here. And I add it in two, three steps. And that's the reason why I'm adding it in two to three steps. Now I turn on the heat a little bit more because now we want to cook this and reduce it until it has a really, really nice thickness. So I think maybe five, four minutes. Um, but stir constantly, otherwise it will burn. We don't want that. And I almost forgot, if you want it salty, add a little bit of salt. I used about one fourth of a teaspoon here. 
So here we are. Um, I've been reducing for about 20-30 minutes now. Um, yeah, if I would have more time, I would let it reduce a little bit longer just to get a little bit thicker consistency. Uh, but I'm running out of time, so um, this needs to do. Um, I set this aside and then we heat up the cream for the ganache. Our dolce de leche is done. Now moving forward. Um, with our chocolate ganache. So I have 75 milliliters. Nope, not 75 milliliters of cream. We need 150. And so we end up with a ratio of two to one, two parts cream, one part chocolate. And here we go. Now I'm adding the cream in two steps. And just make a simple ganache. And I have not been using any sugar in, in the coconut cream. Uh, because the caramel sauce is already very very sweet and I'm also using dark chocolate here because um, I don't want to yeah, make it overly sweet and just making a very very regular ganache and adding the last little bit of the cream if you have some chocolate lumps in here just like I do um, because the chocolate hasn't melted yet, you can either heat it up for a little bit or just use an immersion blender and just mix it really well in. I will heat it up a little bit because um, I don't have a lot of uh, ganache here and I think it will end in a disaster if I use an immersion blender here. Um, so I'll just heat it up in a microwave for five seconds. And now we are adding our walnuts. I have walnut pieces here and I toasted them before. Um, it just brings out more of the nutty, nutty flavor. And I'm just stirring it in. So it will also later give us a little bit of crunch. And here we go. I have already prepared my mold and it is mold 1875 from Chocolate World. And um, yeah, those are bunnies. Oh, wait, which one is going out? This one here. So those are bunnies. Um, they're really, really cute. Um, yeah, but I just don't use them that often. Uh, well, on Easter, obviously. Um, but I love them, so I'm going to use them today because I also wanted a mold that is just a little bit larger so I can uh, get a lot of filling in there. And we will start with our uh, caramel sauce. So this is like really runny. So if you have uh, made it from um, condensed milk, it will be more thick. So it will be a little bit better or just make sure to reduce um, the dairy free option a little bit longer but i just haven't had the time and i also want to show you a little trick here so this is an ice pack and i've already filled my piping bag with um with the caramel sauce but it is still too warm like we're at about 40 degrees celsius and i'm just putting my piping bag a little bit on um on the ice pack and then it's just cooling that down much 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 uh, faster so when I have like small amounts I like to do it otherwise I mean you can also just leave it at room temperature overnight and next day you will be completely fine but this is usually a very um, fast option to cool it down if you're in a hurry and unfortunately today I am I only have a limited time today to record this and make them all right now we are ready to pipe in our caramel sauce and I'm piping in the caramel sauce at first because you've seen that it is really runny. And so what I'm doing later with the ganache, I'm basically um, yeah, adding a barrier between the runny caramel and the last chocolate layer with the ganache that is setting. Um, and so I don't really care how runny the caramel underneath is because I have a barrier between chocolate and caramel. If you have the time, you can also just fill your bonbons with a caramel or any other runny filling and just leave it overnight. Caramel um, develops a skin after a certain amount of time and you should be able um, to cap them with your chocolate and add the last chocolate layer. I don't have the time today, so that's why I'm um, adding the ganache right now and let the ganache set. And you know what? I'll show you another thing. So uh, I have a big hole here in my piping bag and that's because um, I only have <laughs> like the cheap or broken things here at home and I have the good equipment in my kitchen so um, yeah well what can I do now <laughs> it's only a small mold 
I'll get through it. And now your caramel is nice and covered. I need to let this set. Like there's no other way. This needs to set for at least half an hour in the fridge at least so it gets all set. Um, and then we can cap it. Let's take a look at them. Okay, great. You can't see nothing. <laughs> Wait. This is how they look. Let's cut one open. Okay, you can see on top is the caramel and here you have the ganache. I think it's hard to see on camera, but let's give it a try. They are really, really good. Um, the caramel gives a nice sweetness, but it's not overpowering. Um, the walnuts are really nice and crunchy and you can definitely taste them. Yeah, um, I'm surprised how well they turned out. Um, <laughs> really surprised, to be honest. I thought today would be more like Angie screwing up something, but yeah, no, they're really, really good. Hi, uh, Angie from the future here, and I have to uh, give you an update on the uh, vegan dolce di leche with the coconut milk. So on the first and second day, it tasted really, really good. Everything was fine. And then it started to become goopy. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. It was just like a little bit glibbery and really weird. I don't know if I did something wrong, um, but I would recommend just using the condensed milk version of it and just use the dairy option. Um, yeah, nothing else to say here. Um, it really tasted good one or two days and then it got weird. So that's the update. The bonbons certainly don't taste exactly like Oreshki, but I really love the walnut ganache. I think that's um, pretty much my favorite part of the whole um, construction. Um, and I will definitely use it in other recipes as well. And that's a wrap. So if you have any questions, leave them down in the description below. Send me a DM on Instagram at Chocolate Spiel. If you need any equipment, um, I have a couple of links down below as well. And that's all. Have a good one. Bye.